So this video is part of our introduction to equations and their solutions. Now today we're going to go through what the definition of an equation is, uh, how we can create one using uh, things that we already know, uh, what exactly a solution to an equation is, and the process for going through and trying to solve equations using mental math. We will get to a rigorous process later on in the year, uh, but for right now we're just going to do with mental math, uh, and I think you'll find that by the time we get to the end of the video, many of these processes that we're going through are ones that you've seen before, or at least gone through before, but maybe not uh, given a particular name to. Uh, and before we get to equations, though, we have to go back and visit something else we've done already this year, which is talk about expressions. And remember, expressions come in two different types. Uh, there are numerical expressions that have to do with just numbers and operations, and then there are variable expressions, which is what happens when you add a variable to them. And when we talk about equations, what we usually mean is using variable expressions together with some sort of numeric expression or maybe with another variable expression uh, to find something that we can find a unique solution for or maybe a series of unique solutions. So let's say we start with an expression that looks like this x plus 9. Should you go ahead and pause the video and think about the question that's at the top? You don't have to write down uh, any answers to it, but just think about if we wanted to be able to find a specific value for the variable in this expression, that is one that the variable would have to be, what would we need or what would we need to know? What might help us with that process? Again, you don't have to write down any thoughts. Just go ahead and pause the video. Uh, think about it for 30 seconds to a minute and come back when you're ready to move on. So as long as this expression doesn't have anything that it's set equal to or that is compared to, if it's just x plus 9, there's no value that the variable has to have unless we arbitrarily choose one. We can pick a value for x at random, and then we can assign it that value, but there's no reason that this x has to be any one particular value or another. And in order to get to something where x has to have a particular value, we need to move from expressions to equations. And the difference between an expression and an equation is that an equation has an equal sign, whereas an expression is just that. It's an expression that is not compared to anything else. There is no equal sign, there is no uh, less than, there is no greater than, there is no comparison whatsoever. It is just an expression. And as soon as we have an equal sign, we need to have something that our first expression is equal to. So if you take two expressions and you set them equal to each other, that is when you form an equation. So go ahead, pause the video, write down the definition of equation which is right there circled in yellow, and come back when you're ready to move on. So notice this says the definition of an equation is just two expressions set equal to each other. Now we can come up with some ridiculous equations that are obviously not true. For example, we could say 3 is equal to 19. That is obviously not true. That is not equal. 3 and 19 do not have the same value, but it is still two expressions that are set equal to each other, so it qualifies as an equation. It is a false equation, but it is an equation nonetheless. Two things set equal to each other. We really don't like to deal with false equations because it really uh, gets away from the idea of equations and equal signs anyway, uh, where the equal sign really is talking about two values that are equal to each other. So we'd much rather have equations look like something like 2 plus 3 equals 5, 7 equals 10 minus 3, things like that, where the two values actually are equal. Now remember back to our variable expression for x plus 9. This expression here as soon as we know that x has a particular value, we can give an expression that value. But we could do it backwards. Rather than say that x has a particular value, we could instead, instead of using our first process, which is giving the variable a value, we could instead give the expression a value and say that x plus 9 has to equal 18. We say that the value of x plus 9 and the value of 18 must be the same. As soon as we say that, we can start to make interesting observations about the variable in the expression. There's only one number we can substitute in for x so that x plus 9 equals 18. We've already started with 9. We need to move up to 18. So therefore, x has to have a value of 9. The only way for x plus 9 to be 18 is to give x a value of 9. This boxed yellow 
equation here that says x equals 9, the value of the variable that makes the equation true, this is called the solution. We'll write down the formal definition of that in class when you get here uh, tomorrow or whatever day it is that your next class is. Um, but when we use the verb to solve, we really mean to find the value of a variable in an equation. So this x plus 9 is the value that makes that true. And remember when we talked about uh, the equal sign and how it really talks about two values being the same, when we think about it that way, that's how we're going to have the most productive conversations about equations. This value, x plus 9, must be identical to this value, 18, in order for that equation to be true and in order for anything that we want to work out to work out. When we've started thinking about them as two equal values, and when we use two equal values, we understand how to manipulate two equal values because we've seen lots of examples of that in life. For example, scales where you have uh, one side that is balanced with another, uh, we'll be able to come up with some really powerful ways of solving equations. But for right now, we're just going to do it mentally and try to come up with the answer in our head. How does, uh, how can we find out what value x needs to have in order to make the equation true? So if we look at the equation in the top left, where we have 5x is equal to 25, we're going to think to ourselves, what value does x have to have so that 5 times x is 25? Well, we know that 5 times 5 is 25, so therefore x has to have a value of 5. So go ahead, pause the video, write these equations down, give the solutions for them, the value for x that makes them true. See if you can come up with some patterns about how you solve them or how to describe your process, and then uh, unpause the video when you're ready to see the solutions and move on. So when we have x divided by 7 equals 12, moving from left to right, uh, in order to divide a number by 7 to get 12, our original number needs to be 84. We know that from one of our fact uh, families and basic division facts. If we have x minus 14 equals 6, the number that we can take 14 away to get 6 is 20. Back down in the bottom left, if x plus 22 equals 40, in order to get to 40 from 22, we have to add 18. For the bottom uh, center one, in order to get take 13 away to get 19, we have to start at 32. And if we multiply x by 12 to get 132, that means our original x is going to need to be 11. Uh, so these are the sort of basic equations that we're going to be talking about. We'll look at more complicated ones later on in the year. Uh, but for right now, you can see that a lot of them have to deal with facts that we've done before. Uh, and remember that the equal sign really does mean and is really trying to say that those two halves of the equation really are identically, equally the same in value.